Chris here. This time we are doing an actual new movie, a movie from 2023. This is Sound of Freedom. Sound of Freedom is uh, was released in July, July 4th, this month, and it stars Jim Caviezel as Tim Ballard, who is a uh, Homeland Security agent, and he's tasked with busting sex traffickers, actually people that buy from sex traffickers, really. So he's kind of just going after um, your basic pedophile ring, you know, or pedophiles, individuals, I should say. Um, so that's what he's going after. And he's realizing that it's just not enough. He needs to go for the source. So he actually starts to go after the actual international sex traffickers. And of course, you know, it's not in the budget to, you know, kind of go deep into, well, outside the U.S. really, and, you know, deep into the places that are actually bringing them in, like Central America and all that good stuff. So he just has to kind of wing it and budge on the budget a little bit and uh, do the best he can. And it, there comes a time where okay, you're not showing any results and we've spent so much money on this and we need to pull the plug. And uh, he's just like, nope, I'm just going to keep on going. And it sort of becomes a mission from God for him. You know, um, he's on a mission from God, like uh, the Blues Brothers. And that's what he's doing. And he's just out there trying to, to, to bust the actual source of sex trafficking child sex trafficking, I should say. So it's an intriguing premise, isn't it? I think it is. And it's a hell of a movie. It's done really well. It's been successful. Um, I think it's great. Uh, I saw it last night. I'll be honest with you, this is the first film since the pandemic I've actually seen at the theater. Uh, I think I saw No Safe Spaces, you know, the one with uh, Adam Carolla and Dennis Prager back in like December of 2019. And that was the last film I've actually seen at the movie theater or Cineplex, if you will. I've been to a few stage productions since then. Uh, saw Hamilton, a few other things, you know, but I, I just, this is the first film, film I've actually seen and in the theater. And, uh, yeah, it was nice to be back. It was like old times. Like, ah, I remember this. Hot summer day, cool air-conditioned theater. What an experience, you know? Um, the smell of popcorn, you know, great times. So the, the movie progresses in kind of an interesting way. Um, it starts out with a character played by Jessica Barado. Barado. Uh, I believe you pronounce her name. And uh, she plays Katie Gazelle, who is posing as a talent scout. And she lures children in by saying, hey, I can make you a star, you know? And um, so she basically leads two children in, um, Miguel and Rocio, his sister, and other kids as well who are there for the FA audition. And it's, you know, it's interesting how that works. They basically tell the parents, yeah, bring your kids in. And, oh yeah, we don't need any stage daddies here, so you can wait outside and then off they go. And that's how that works, uh, according to this film. So, uh, yeah, okay, I mean, I guess I buy it. I'm along for the ride so far, you know? It's like, okay. So then we're introduced to uh, our hero, uh, Tim Ballard played wonderfully by Jim Caviezel. And he, you know, it, it's kind of a job for him, you know, at first. And then he has a partner who just says, I, I can't stomach this anymore. You know, I close my eyes at night. I just see those kids' faces and I, I can't do it. You know, and even though they're making like 250 arrests or whatever, you know, it's like they're not hitting the source. You know, they're, they're busting 
basically low level pedophiles, if you will, you know? So it's just kind of like, oh, okay, well, yeah, we need to go for the actual sex traffickers. So he's like, all right. So he kind of makes it his mission from God to go after him. And that's really the story. He's uh, got a supportive wife, uh, played by Mira Sorvino, who's always wonderful. Um, I thought she was kind of underused in this a little bit. I mean, she's great in her scenes, but there's not a lot of her in this. So if you're a Mira Sorvino fan, you're not gonna be seeing a whole hell of a lot of her. Uh, just kind of here and there and hit and miss. So, you know. Just keep that in mind. It's still a great story. Um, he starts to get deeper. I mean, the investigation flows naturally. You know, he, he busts a lone pedophile and then gets his sources, basically, and he starts traveling to Central America and, and South America to, you know, to where these kids may be and where the actual traffickers may be. Um, and just kind of picks up clues along the way. And it works very organically. Like it feels like a real investigation and it's based on a true investigation. And it, it works wonderfully. It's just, a, it, it's great. I was particularly intrigued by Katie Gazelle's character because, you know, she's the, you know, her, yeah, the character of Katie Gazelle played by Jessica Barato. And she's, yeah, she's really just trying to, she's the one that's bringing him in. And there's one scene where you kind of see a little bit of remorse on her face. But most of the villains are kind of one dimensional. Just, you know, that's my only real criticism of this film is the villains are just cackling, <laughs> look at how evil I am, hee <laughs> you know. And I'm like, are you that way all the time? Are you really, you know, is that how you are, you know, at work or with your friends or family, you know? I don't think so. You gotta dial that back a little bit. Um, so I just don't buy that they're like that 100% of the time. <laughs> but, okay, so, you know, they kind of come across like over the top Bond villains in a weird way. And I, I'd like to know what their story is a little bit. Like, how did you get into uh, this, you know, either trafficking children or being a client of said traffickers. Um, how does one become that? I guess that's the big question, huh? And I guess the bigger question is, you know, how do we solve the problem uh, with this film? And it kind of shows how deep and dark you, you have to get. But there's also a wholesome earnestness to it all. I mean, Jim Caviezel, who played Jesus in Passion of the Christ 20 years ago, is kind of on a mission from God again, you know? He's just, he, he, it basically turns out to be his spiritual journey. And that's what he's trying to do. He's just, he's trying to save these kids one at a time. Um, I'm not gonna get into too many spoilers here, but I, you know, it's a new movie. So go out and see it. But I will say, um, so the, the brother and sister that are kind of the, the first two that we see abducted and we see you know the, the grief of their father and all that. And it's just, it's, it's really heart-wrenching. It really is heart-wrenching. And I'll just say that he's able to save one of the, the siblings quite easily. You know, try, well, relatively easily in the case of how these cases run. Um, but the other one is a little hard to find. And the third act kind of takes us into Rambo territory as he's got to kind of go with his small crew into the, the jungle a bit uh, to rescue these kids or to rescue this one sibling. That's who he's kind of focusing on. And then of course he'll hopefully bring home the rest. But if it were a Rambo film, you know, Rambo would go in there, guns are blazing, blow everyone away, um, and then hopefully take the, the kids home 
there might be a tragedy here and there. Maybe the kids might get killed and then he'd have to go on a revenge spree as like the last Rambo movie. Um, or like a home alone, you know, kind of thing if they come to find him. But that isn't this type of movie. Uh, but it does feel a little Rambo-esque in the, the third act. But it kind of keeps it grounded, which makes it oh so suspenseful because it's still much, very much in reality. So that's great. Um, our our uh, sidekicks here for Jim Caviezel, I gotta give a shout out to Bill Camp who plays Vampiro, who used to work for the cartel and now is helping out our, our hero. And he kind of had a, a spiritual awakening when he was with a, what he thought was a 25 year old prostitute years ago. And turns out, wait, she's not quite of age, is she? And he, it just kind of crushed his soul. So he's here to redeem himself. He's a fun guy, wears, he's kind of overweight, wears, you know, fedoras and Hawaiian shirts and drinks a lot. Um, and he also, the first from scene one, his first scene, you know, he's telling um, Tim to lighten up, you know, to to actually look like a rich tourist looking for some pedo action. And that's, whoa, you know, <laughs> okay. Um, and Tim takes his advice and he learns and he kind of, you know, lightens up a bit in his demeanor and looks like a rich drunk tourist looking for some kind of action. So yeah, that's the film. And it is brilliant, it's wonderful. Is it hard to watch? Well, it's hard subject matter and you know, they don't show mm, what really happens, which is, I mean, come on, you know, you're not gonna do that. Um, but they, they show enough to get you going, yeah, okay, gotcha, yeah, this is disturbing as hell, mm -hmm. okay, great. So, you get the point, you totally get the point. Um, I highly recommend this film. It is quite controversial, <laughs> and I want to get into that a little bit. Um, I've never really talked about politics before, and I don't know if I want to start now. But I kind of want to tip the toe gingerly through the, the the landmine of what we are doing here, <laughs> I guess, without getting my ass blown up. Um, so I'm going to attempt to explain the controversy, the controversy, in the way that I see it, or the way that I understand it because it's kind of perplexing, to say the least. But in this day and age where we are all divided, I guess, and <sighs> everything's politicized, you would think that we would be on the same page that child sex trafficking is a bad thing. But I guess some people are also for criminal rights and other people are, you know, for victims' rights. And the victims' rights crowd tend to be conservative and the criminal rights people tend to be on the left side of the aisle. Um, I'm just going to put it out there. I'm a lefty, but I'm center, you know. I have a lot of friends who are on the right side of the aisle. I used to be a, a young Alex P. Keaton back in the day. My grandparents were grooming me to be a young Alex P. Keaton. I think I may have said that in another video. Maybe the one relationships, I forget. Anyway, maybe I didn't at all. Maybe I'm just dreaming this up. But yeah, I mean, you know, I was kind of groomed to be that young Republican, you know, as a teenager, but that was back in the 80s when Reagan was in office and you know, that was still kind of cool, I guess, or I don't know. I mean, still, it's, I have Republican friends and they're cool, you know? And we talk all the time and we don't shoot each other. <laughs> well, I don't shoot anyone because I don't have a gun, but, um, you know, they have guns and they haven't shot me in the face yet. So we're able to have civil conversations, which I find awesome and endearing and uh, hopeful for humanity. So that being said, I think that that's, that's why this is politicized. Um, I, 
especially in this day and age of sexual identity. And I think that there is a small group of people on the fringe I've heard of that want, I guess, people who are sex traffickers or purchased from sex, sex traffickers to uh, not be punished so harshly, I guess. I, I, I don't know. I don't know, you know, but again, I would think that we'd be on the same page um, in this day and age that child sex trafficking is bad. So <sighs> I did it. I got through the political part. Yay. I don't know if I did it well or gracefully, but I definitely danced through it, didn't I? I would like to talk, you know, tackle that topic uh, a little bit more directly in the future uh, and have the confidence to, but without failing to understand any other side that might be out there. You know, I'd like to understand all sides. And that's just me, because I want to understand people, especially people with differing opinions. You know, I, I want to really get them without judging them or criticizing them. I really want to understand that. So anyway, that's the basis of the controversy, controversy um, as I see it. And um, I'm just going to kind of end it there. If you haven't seen this film yet, definitely check it out. It's really worthwhile. It does open your eyes to certain things. Um, the other criticisms of this film, kind of going along that line, are, well, it's based on a true story, but it's not, you know, exactly historically accurate. Well, very few films are 100% historically accurate when they're based on a true story. Uh, Goodfellas, you know, takes a few liberties here and there. Casino, a few. They're very close, but a few. I remember when Mississippi Burning came out with Gene Hackman and William Dafoe. Mm. Yeah, that film took a big hit uh, in the in the the freelance department of let's make our own shit up. You know, <laughs> I mean, it really did borrow a lot of interesting ideas that weren't there, but they made our heroes look better. Uh, not better, just more heroic. You know, it wasn't the way that our villains got busted in that film wasn't quite as heroic so they they made the fbi look a little bit more roguish and we're gonna combat the, the clan you know a little bit more hands-on than they did in real life so um that was one of the biggest differences there too so um yeah films take liberties that are based on true stories. It just happens all the time and we have to expect it. And, and by the way, um, just because, you know, just because there's a movie about, if someone criticized Mississippi Burning, you know, because, you know, the, the Klan wasn't actually, you know, gone after in that kind of direct way, it doesn't mean that people are supporting the clan. <laughs> so we can go ahead and just end that reality right there, because that's obviously bogus. Um, and I feel like in this day and age of uh, being so divisive and turning everything into politics, uh, that's one thing that we can let go of. So I suggest we all do. Anyway, that's my review. It's a good movie. It's solid. Um, I don't give stars for any things. I, I find the star thing interesting. Ebert would give four stars. He went on the four star system, which kind of makes sense if you're like, he'd go off the, the grade point average, you know, the 4.0 grade, grade point average. So kind of based on that, most critics do the five star system, which leaves some leeway. For me, I don't use stars because we're talking about art and it's all subjective and that's just how I feel about it, you know? So I'll point out the good qualities as I see them, the bad qualities, I'll try to be as objective as hell. And um, that's how I roll with that. So anyway, thanks for watching and definitely check out this movie and I will catch you next time. Peace out.